You look at Lautaro, the way he's playing. You look at Barella being the, the big game player that Barella has been in for Italy and, and more recently for Inter in the quarterfinals. These are the guys grabbing the headlines for Inter at the moment, not Lukaku. If he were to lead Inter to a Champions League final, then he will have made himself immortal at Inter. The Lukaku element going to, to Inter and talking about them for a second is, is a really interesting one when we talk mm. about the ripple effect and where how we got here in terms of Lukaku even you know playing for Inter right now but also kind of the the, the future um Gianni it's a bit harsh to put this on you but like what what happens with what happens with Lukaku um over the next couple of weeks and what does that mean for Inter Milan moving forward because he's almost becoming a bit of an eyesore i know he's like the last few weeks he's, he's been he's been good he's been very good yep. um but prior to that it's been it's been quite an argumentative season for inter milan as a whole and he's sort of been a little bit a part of that um well, how do you feel about lukaku his career his inter career and his future inter career I mean, if we go back a couple of years and you see the Lukaku under Conte and you look at the system and you look at the players he played with at Inter, not a huge amount has changed. Yeah, sure, the manager's different. It is a different style, but he's still playing up front when he plays with Lataro. Perfect. We saw that under Conte. An amazing front two, three, four years ago under Conte. We haven't quite seen that under Inzaghi. Is he an Inzaghi player? Maybe not. But you look at the depth there in that Inter squad. There's four very good strikers there. You know, Edin Dzeko, when he's on form, Simone Inzaghi loves him and he can see he's not had the best couple of months, but you wouldn't be surprised to see him starting these games up front with Lautaro, like class on his day. Correa, again, managed under Inzaghi at Lazio, offers something good from the bench. Lukaku, despite being the big name on the big money, you know he's not someone that walks into this 11 anymore. And where will he be in a few months? We don't know. I mean, can Inter afford him next season? Probably not. Um, huge wages. Chelsea needs some investment back if they're going to sell him. Will there be a buyer that can put him on that sort of contract? And absolutely not. He hasn't shown enough form. So Lukaku, yes, he's the big name and he's had the big headlines. But when you look at this Inter team, he's he's more of an ins- insignificant character going into this semi final. You know, we were not really speaking about Lukaku when we're speaking about Inter's danger men. You know, you look at the wing backs, DeMarco and Dumfries. You look at Lautaro the way he's playing. You look at Barella being the, the big game player that Barella has been in for Italy and, and more recently for Inter in the quarterfinals. These are the guys grabbing the headlines for Inter at the moment, not Lukaku. Uh, Nima, does, does Lukaku need, need something from the, these semi finals then to sort of give himself a chance of being an Inter player next year? Or will he be returning to Chelsea regardless? What do you think will happen? Oh, he's returning to, to Chelsea regardless. This season has, you know, what he can do. If he were to lead Inter to a Champions League final and by some grace of, by some act of God, Inter were to win the Champions League because of Lukaku, then he will have made himself immortal at Inter. It all changes. It all changes. I mean, all of them. Remember Fernando Torres at Chelsea? That goal changed everything forever. No one will, yes, we will remember him being a flop at Chelsea, but everyone will remember him getting Chelsea to the Champions League final you know, for that goal against Barcelona. You know, all of these things change. Uh, Now's the time to do it, and he's hitting form in the right time. Look, I think the Lukaku discussion needs to be nuanced a little bit here. I don't think he will... If we remember that this is someone who's played professional football since he was 15 years old, that he's pushing 30 now, that's 15 years of him pushing his body, and it's a big body, all right? He is a big guy, and he's been pushing that for 15 years. At some point, when you, unless you're very careful and do what Cristiano Ronaldo and what Zlatan Ibrahimovic did, which is play differently, conserve your energy, eat, sleep, train differently, you're not, you can't keep pushing your body like that. It's just you're a different human. body types too. Exactly. You look at Zlatan, you know Ronaldo, different body types. Yeah. You, Wayne Rooney and Lukaku, you yeah. might compare. You know, no, I'm, shorter, I'm just saying, I'm just talking about how span. you treat your body, like in terms of how you burn yeah. it. Zlatan barely moves today compared to seven, eight years ago. He use he yeah. plays differently. Cristiano Ronaldo used to be a technical winger who used to dribble. Well, he's for the past five, six years, he's been parked in the penalty area. Like yeah. what I'm, what I'm saying is that you need to adapt with your age and change how you utilize your body. Romelu Lukaku, I think, 
I don't think he will ever be the Lukaku we saw under Antonio Conte at Inter ever again. Back then, he was a world-class number nine, one of the best out there. I don't think he'll ever be that again, but I do still think that there is a serviceable player there. However, his cost, his wages, are too steep for Inter to be able to afford them for another season, unless Chelsea and him decide to slash them in half, which I don't think is going to happen. 